everybody and welcome to The Flute Practice. This video forms part of a series that I'm doing called Why You Should Practice Blank Space and you can fill it in. Today we are filling it in with scales. Now more than just practicing, I would say this is like why you should practice and understand your scales. These videos are kind of short little motivational videos on areas that we often struggle to practice and I'm here to motivate you and give you some good tips on how to practice them. Now recently one of my patrons quite rightly asked a very good question. Why should I practice and understand scales? And this kind of got me thinking to why should we practice scales and why do we need to understand them? Okay I'm going to start with the scale part, why we should practice our scales and then kind of move into the understanding part and hopefully these will kind of all connect in weird ways. So the important thing to know about music, music is built up, fundamentally built up on scales and arpeggios or a different kind of scale patterns. Now this perhaps is not so true for some like really weird modern music, thank you Schoenberg for that, but for the most part music is really pretty logical and if you investigate your music like I recently did in a Patreon only series, you guys can go check that out on Patreon, you will see how integral scales and arpeggios are to kind of the building blocks of music and how by understanding how to play those it's like 100% easier. Like what would you rather do? Would you rather kind of play a piece and play eight note run that you have no clue what it is or see those eight notes and be like oh that's G major, I've done that a thousand times in practice, I know how to do that. You see I think our brain functions on patterns. We develop patterns that help us understand the world. It's the reason why we like to box everyone into neat boxes and you know we have the Myers-Briggs like I don't know how many classifications where we're like everybody fits into this. There is some truth to it. <laughs> I think it's how we work and function as human beings to a large extent. I'm not getting into a debate about this so I'm going to stop this conversation right here. But the point is I believe we work in patterns. So when we have music in front of us and we can see a pattern that we understand, that we know, that we've memorized, that is something that is well established, then in the piece it's easy. And I always think like this, you know, would you rather know the pattern of G major in the piece and be like, ah, it's G major, I can play that. Or would you, every single time you play a piece which has a G major scale, you have to like relearn those notes and try and understand what they mean. For me, it's a no brainer. Learn the pattern and apply it to everything around. So my advice is let's rather learn all the majors and minors, learn all the arpeggios, even learn the things like dominant and diminished chords, chromatics, whole tones, and, and, and understand those things and the music will start to make a lot of sense. I have a little fun story about this that I'd love to share. So in my fourth year at university, we had to kind of play a big concerto and the wind band at the time was doing this really, really, really cool uh, concerto for flute and wind band by Mike Moa, very cool piece of music. And there was auditions opening, everyone auditioned. I was the only one crazy enough to be brave enough to put my name down on the audition list, even though I could not play the thing yet. So I automatically got the gig, <laughs> yay. Now this piece was pretty insane. Like it was tricky, it was not easy. And what made it so difficult was that it was mostly based on the blues scale. And I'd never done the blues scale before. So, you know, I'm busy learning all of these notes that just seemed completely like they didn't make sense to me. They didn't make sense to my brain. And my dad back in the day was a bit of a jazz muso and he understood a fair amount about blues. And one day he sat me down and he said, okay, I'm taking you through the blues scale and you're gonna understand the blues scale. So we sat down and he explained it to me and that's something definitely probably should do at some point in a video. And we worked through the blues scale and I cannot tell you, it was like, I looked at this piece of music and I saw and I was like, oh, there's the blues scale in C. There's, and it was like, suddenly the notes were easy. I practiced the blues scale for like a couple of weeks and I could play the thing. It wasn't even a stress anymore. Like psychologically, I would see that like crazy, like, you know, swamp of black notes. And I was like, okay, but I know that's just patterns on the blue scale. Gotcha. When you understand the pattern, it has such cool benefits because it means sight reading, like it improves your sight reading. You can actually sight read things much better because you can identify patterns faster. It means you learn notes faster because you're learning things really quickly because you're identifying patterns rather than having to learn individual notes. 
and it means that you become more performance secure because in your brain, your brain is no longer having to feed so much information to it all the time. It's just thinking in blocks of patterns. So playing scales is one thing, right? You could have a book of scales and just go through them every day and, and you are practicing them and there's a certain amount of muscle memory that has gone into it. But the real power of scales comes when you understand what the pattern is and how it functions because that helps you to memorize your scales. And memorizing your scales is really, really huge. It is so great for building technique. If you ever have any ambitions of improvising, this is so amazing. And I'm just gonna like throw in another little fun story here because I can. When, like three years ago, I was playing like around the country playing Common Fantasy with the kind of like South African version of Last Night of the Proms. And I was playing this thing from memory, like not my biggest strength. It's not something I'd really done much of. And it was like high pressure environment. And there's like that whole last two pages, which is all in E major. And like, it's crazy. It's all over the place. And I remember there was one show where I completely lost my place and I just improvised E major scales. I improvised like people that know the piece, the conductor probably knew most other people would never have known. And that's because I understood E major and I knew how to kind of wing it in that key. So I guess there's kind of like another spinoff of like knowing your scales really well. And that is, it actually helps you memorize. Very, very, very important because Memorizing is all about memorizing patterns rather than individual notes. Like if I can just memorize, oh, this is a G major scale rather than like it's G, A, B, C. I mean, that's crazy, guys. That's crazy. So understanding how the scales work and function starts to give you a clear understanding of how the music works as well. So, for example, I'm busy playing a piece and there are certain things within the music. For example, the leading note, and I've spoken about this in some of my videos. So the seventh note of the scale always has this tendency to want to pull back to the tonic or the first note of the scale. So for example, if I play, it kills you, right? You really want it to go, there's a story. I don't know if it's true or not, about a composer who used to be woken up every day and his parents used to just wake him up doing until he would eventually get up and be like, ah, play me the G. Which, you know, if you're like a super music nerd, totally get that one, totally do. So in that situation, you can really see knowing and understanding what that seventh note is of the scale and that it belongs to G major helps us understand tension and release in the music. Where is the music going to? Where is it coming from? Where does the music kind of build tension and then where does it resolve? Yo, there's just so much beautiful depth. And I know as a beginner, you might not see this yet and you might not feel this yet and you might be like, ah, uh, whatever. But I can promise you, as you learn and grow, you are really going to appreciate the depth in which you understand music because it's a language. It's like imagine... I could rattle off like, I don't know, like sentences in Russian. I can't, I can't do it. I can say like, I'm sorry if anyone's Russian here, you're deeply offended. <laughs> I don't even know what those things mean. I had a friend who had a Russian boyfriend who would speak Russian to her dog. And that's how I know those words. They mean nothing to me. I could run around being like, I don't know what it means. I could be swearing right now. I wouldn't know. It's, it's kind of, a little less meaningful, a lot less meaningful. And that for me is like music without understanding your scales. You're playing it, but you don't really understand what you're saying. So my little tip for learning your scales, join my Patreon. I'm serious guys, not too long ago, we have started a scale workshop and you can kind of work from the beginning of this workshop and you can kind of work through these scales. It's like an awesome practice resource. It's an awesome community of people that are like really encouraging each other and weekly videos that come out to help you along this process. So if you're struggling to practice your scales, you're struggling to understand them maybe even, I've done a whole playlist on understanding your scales and you can join my Patreon page and join that space to really learn your scales. Until then everybody, happy practicing and see you next time.